Somebody get Russ some sunglasses. <laughs> uh, if you hadn't guessed already, my name is George Matson. I uh, am well represented here today. So <laughs> it seems, seems like the uh, last 30 years of goofing around has kind of showed up in one spot. Uh, they pretty much covered what the modular can do. Uh, I Last year when I was showing the prototype, uh, I was explaining it, it was like brand new, I just got the prototype working. Uh, since then I received a whopping four orders, <laughs> and I, uh, but I had to build eight, because James and, uh, and Matrix uh, basically put up the money to uh, get the first prototype made, so I had to get them theirs. Uh, I have, uh, I got four paid orders, actual customers, and most of them are represented here, <coughs> and I had one to play, that I had to build to play show and tell with, and then Scott over there that's doing the MIDI stuff is my little brother, even though he's much bigger, but he needed one so he could do his development work on it, so I had to build eight out of the four, and uh, I, I dumped the prototype uh, immediately after uh, showing it last year and started in on actually doing production stuff. So I had circuit boards made and actually ordered parts and worked on the graphics. If you realize last year it was kind of this pasty, light yellow, <laughs> which I thought was different instead of aside, outside of the size of the thing. I mean, people, uh, people when they finally see it, they go, God, it's a lot smaller than I thought it was, but I've been fearing that since I've been dating. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, but I couldn't get the graphics in that piss lemon yellow, so, uh, so I redesigned them and made them look a little more conventional. And uh, so it looks a little more conventional. Uh, I made... Uh, made my own boxes for the thing because uh, nobody could seem to get a square box right, so I decided <laughs> to do my own. And while I was doing that, uh, Stephen came up to me and said, hey, you want to do my work? And I was shelling out money for eight of these that I, that I got four orders for. And I said, you know, I do have mortgage payments every month. Uh, yeah. So Stephen, God love him. If anybody needs woodwork done, please go talk to Stephen because uh, I need to keep my bills paid while I'm working on this. <laughs> anyway, uh, everybody else pretty much covered what this is, and you all pretty much know my history now, but yeah, that's where I started, was right there 30 years ago on the Cintar. And as anybody knows, this is the Phoenix series uh, mini modular for very specific reasons, because I didn't want to drain my brain too hard, so I ripped off my own circuits and repackaged them. <laughs> And uh, any parts that were obsolete, I found new compatible parts and redesigned it and put it in a modular format. And it's taken me all year to get as far as I have on this. And the last thing that I'm down to before these things are done is the filter. And if anybody knows <laughs> where, where to go. Jim, raise your hand. <laughs> Jim, Jim, Jim. Oh, it's right here. Where's Jim? I oh, it's right here. He's in the front row. Put platform shoes on. Jim Patchell designed my filter. Uh, I initially had a single output and uh, and switched between low pass, band pass, and high pass. And uh, Jim designed an excellent filter, which this is in a low pass configuration. Okay. And uh, it's an excellent filter. And uh, but what I ran into is he had so many buffers and stuff on there and to handle some situations he added more buffers. I only got a circuit board that big that I could play with and I was bound and determined to stick with the through hole design. So mostly because I can't hold my hand steady enough to solder surface mount and I certainly can't see surface mount. So, so uh, it's my own physical limitations that made me want to do through hole. <laughs> Anyway, so I, I kind of chopped up Jim's filter a bit and decided to provide all three mode outputs at once because that would eliminate a $20 switch <laughs> and provide some versatility. Oh, I, I didn't say that about the switch. Anyway, so uh, basically I, I got this filter built about 8.30 last night finally, and it does work, and just for grins, I did tap the high pass out of it. Uh, so I got a six 
6 dB proc, do one pole high pass output on it, but I got the full four pole low pass. And it sounds pretty good. Uh, but what I wanted to do is in all of my copious spare time, I developed three new modules that nobody knows about. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of show them off because uh, nobody knows about them. <laughs> Seems like a good forum to release that. Uh, I prototyped them real quick. I don't know. I have no idea what they'll cost, if they'll go into production. I have no idea. Uh, a lot of things are changing shortly. But I thought they were cool and they really, really help with the stuff. But this is what this thing sounds like. Good filter. pick out overtones off of a square wave with a filter. I figure if a filter can't do that, it's not worth toying with. Jim's filter does that in spades. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, so it's a good sounding filter. Um, so it's prototyped. I hand wired it, got it done last night. I still have to uh, finalize a few things on it, tweak it in, and uh, design a board and do all that. So all of you people that are my customers, Hang in there. <laughs> We're almost there. All the rest of the systems are done. <laughs>